So Peter said, look, Satan wants to, he desires to sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you. That's the reason why we must make sure that uh, we understand what we are doing. Uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, I'll read uh, verse uh, 13. 2 Corinthians in chapter 11, verse 13. For such are false prophets, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. We need to be watchful about this. There are false prophets all over the place, even inside the church. You must be very careful because the church is a public place and the false prophets will come. They will invite you after the message. They will say, come, I can give you another alternative to the message that uh, our Father and the Lord has preached. You must be very careful because Satan wants to deceive believers uh, to go back into darkness. And you will not go back into darkness. I said we will not go back into darkness. The, the, Satan wants us, he wants us to denounce the truth and believe a lie. That's why true believers must be watchful. In uh, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, we're told that we should be sober, be vigilant, uh, because your adversary devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking who he may devour. And in verse 9, it says, Who resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your uh, brethren that are in the world. So Peter makes it, to, makes it very clear that what Satan is doing uh, to saints, he's also doing it to believers. We go to um, point number three now, saints power to overcome temptation. Saints power to overcome temptation. You know, we, we, as we look at uh, the testimony of Jesus Christ, is our Lord and our master, and we are to follow him. We are to live our lives the way he wants us to live our lives. In Matthew chapter 4, Matthew chapter 4, in verse 11, the devil, uh, then the devil lived him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. That was the conclusion of Satan's attempts to make Jesus Christ uh, to disobey God. After all the temptations, 40 days, and because Jesus Christ resisted him by the word, he left him alone. And if you resist Satan by the word, he will leave you alone. You see, God wants all his saints to overcome temptation like Christ. He did not rush into temptation with a light heart, but with a sober mind. If we handle temptation prayerfully, we will overcome. We have a single-minded devotion to do the will of God. We think about uh, uh, Joseph uh, in Egypt. Joseph had no pastor. He had no Bible to read. He had nothing. But then, because he had made up his mind, what he had from the beginning before he was uh, taken captive, he, th those things remained in his heart. He had a dream, and he made up his mind that, well, as a, as a, a child of God, I will make sure that this dream is uh, fulfilled. That's why he never allowed the Potiphar to get him. And then you, you read about the uh, Rechabites in uh, Genesis chapter 35. Those uh, Rechabites, many, many years ago, what the, the word that they believed, and their standing on was given to them many, many years ago, before that time. Even though it was the prophet of God that came to tempt them, they never allowed that temptation to take them away. So to overcome temptation, believers must have the knowledge of the word of God. And you must have the heart to obey the word of God. In Psalm 119, verse 9, the Bible says, verse 11, Psalm 119, verse 11, they, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. If you have the word of God in your heart, you will not sin against God. But the question is, how do you have knowledge of the word of God when you miss Bible study? You have reasons not to come to Bible study. You have reasons not to come to Thursday meeting. You have reasons not to come to worship service in the district. Even some people come to combine service once a while. They don't, some women don't attend women fellowship. Some many people don't attend house caring fellowship. They don't, uh, some workers don't attend the Saturday workers training. Some leaders don't attend Tuesday leaders' meeting. Retreats are there, they don't attend. And some people say they are professionals, they don't attend the Young Professionals Forum. And they, some people say they are, they are the highly placed people. They, there's IFL program, they don't attend. But Jesus was faithful to the Father. And so we too must be faithful. It is the word that you have heard that the Holy Spirit will remind you in your heart. Uh, in, in the time of temptation. You know, temptation can come, temptation to disobey God, temptation to dishonor God, temptation to damn the consequence of sin. All those things, they come there. That's why we must make sure that uh, 
we do not allow anything to hinder us from attending meetings uh, in the church. In conclusion, if you have not repented of your sin, you cannot have the power to overcome uh, temptation. Because Jesus, in, in John chapter 1, verse 12, we're told that as many as receive him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. You know, it is when you become a son of God, that's the time that you'll be able to enjoy what Jesus Christ enjoyed. Because Jesus Christ, the Bible says for, in, in Hebrews chapter 8, verse uh, 18, the Bible says, for in that he himself had suffered, being tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted. Jesus cares for us. We sang, just sang that now. He cares for us. And if you have been tempted, you are, Jesus is able. Don't just fall down. Don't say, well, I don't have anything to do again. Let me just fall. No, you don't do that. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, the Bible said there had no temptation. Uh, there, there had no temptation taking you, but such as is common to men. But God is faithful. Who will with the temptation, also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. So provision has been made for uh, our escape, and you are going to escape in Jesus' name. I say you will escape in Jesus' name. You know, the issue is that uh, we must uh, make sure that we live the life that God wants us to live. And when we live that kind of life, you will see God will always do what he has planned to do in our lives. Today, you know, the Lord has spoken to us about temptation. If you are not born again, just make up your mind. Because temptation can destroy your life here, destroy your family when you fall into it. But then, if you are born again, you repented, you know, genuinely. The grace of God is available. Like Jesus Christ, he, he, he used the word to overcome temptation, and the word of God is there. We come to this place, we have the word of God in this church. And when you have the word of God, you, you speak the word of God against the devil. The devil will, lift you, will leave you alone. And all the tempters, you no know, human tempters here and there, understand. Don't say, is that man that is tempting me? No. Satan enter into the heart of that person. If somebody is a source of temptation to you, run away from that person. And uh, oh, the, the, the key for us is that we resist the devil. Resist the devil. That's the key that we have in James chapter 4 before we pray. James chapter 4, in uh, verse 7, it says, Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Temptation is so much all around me. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. We are going to resist the devil in Jesus' name. Let's uh, close our eyes. I want you to talk to the Lord. If you know that you are not born again, you will always fall into temptation. Pray this morning and say, God, confess yourself and say, God, I want to be saved. See me, I've been falling, falling, falling. I fall into temptation. I'm not happy. I'm, so, I'm sorrowful all the time. Pray and say, God, today I come to you. It's very simple. Just hand over yourself to the Lord and uh, invite Jesus Christ into your life. Want to confess your sin, Jesus will forgive you. The Bible says he will abundantly pardon. And if you are a, a child of God, you are born again. If you are falling into temptations every time, well, check up. Your, your, your salvation experience. Check up whether you have truly repented. You know, some people will just uh, keep on doing the same thing because they have not repented. When you repent, God's grace will be there for you to always overcome. We are going to overcome in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we pray. Our Father, we are very grateful to you for the teaching this morning. We ask you, God in heaven, as many here that are sinners and they have seen the danger, the terrible things in, in yielding to temptation. I pray, Lord, as they confess their sins today, you will save them in Jesus' name. And all your children that are here, oh God, because we know that temptation will come, the grace that we need to resist Satan, to resist the devil at all times, grant unto us in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for the answer. In Jesus' name, we pray. This morning, we've just studied on victory over temptations. And if you have any question, please, can you move uh, to the front so that we'll give you opportunity to ask your question. Please do that very quickly. Come towards the front where we have the microphone. The 
Yes, give, give to the sister in white the My question is that if you have a boss that accuses you wrongly of doing what you did not do or taking something which you did not untake, then later your mind beats you to do it. Is that temptation or not? And my question, second question is that as you were preaching to your friends in school about holiness, purity, and giving, then your friend switches the topic to talk about your church not doing the right thing by not giving young people the chance to go to college based on the high tuition field that they placed in the college. Is that temptation and how can you respond? What kind of answer can you give to your friend? Thank you. Yeah, thank you. In our study today, we have been assured that we can have victory over temptation. The Lord Jesus Christ himself was tempted and in the temptation he overcame and we will overcome. Now, we need to understand that uh, temptation, when it is coming, yes, we have learned from the study that temptation actually comes from the devil and that is true. But we need also to understand that the temptation can come from uh, sources that are used by the tempter. We know the example of uh, what happened in the Garden of Eden, that Eve was tempted, but uh, Satan did not appear as Satan with horns and tails as people uh, try to project, them, uh, project him, uh, but he came through a serpent. And so, uh, temptation can come to us in various means. Now, um, the question that our sister asked, the first is um, a temptation emanating from the heart. We need to understand that you may not always see a physical devil coming to tempt you. Uh, it could be something happening right within the heart. And when we uh, are able to acknowledge that what is happening is temptation, it uh, guarantees and of course it, it, uh, it helps uh, to make us have victory. In Mark chapter uh, 7, Mark chapter 7, in Mark chapter 7, the Lord Jesus said there in verse uh, 21, he said, for from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. Now, we understand that temptation, when it is coming, if we do not actually know that it is temptation, the likelihood to fall is there. And that's why it becomes very, very important that we watch over the thoughts that come to our hearts. The Bible says, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Uh, we need to check up the thoughts that come into our hearts, whether they are actually um, coming from the Lord or whether they are there to actually tempt us. Uh, actually, if you look at the, the passage we read in Mark chapter 7, some of the things we saw there, the average believer will know that this one is sin. Uh, because clearly, when you're talking about theft, adultery, fornication, wickedness, and all that, it is very clear, and one is likely to say this one is temptation. But then, there are things that will come to the heart and a person may not even know that uh, this is temptation, but um, if you, if you are, if you are, if you are a, somebody who weighs every thought in the light of the scriptures, you will still be able to identify that as temptation coming to you as a believer. In First Chronicles, First Chronicles chapter chapter 21, 
First Chronicles chapter 21. The Bible said that, and Satan stood against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. Now, um, this is not the same like when David saw Bathsheba, uh, you know, the wife of Uriah. That one, even the servants that helped to call the woman will know this one is sin. The man himself, uh, he knew what happened because when he was trying to cover it up, it was clear this is sin. But this is a situation where something comes from within the heart. You know, sometimes we have achievements in life. Sometimes we have blessings and things coming our way and we say, this is great, this is an opportunity, this is something wonderful. And if we're not still careful, for instance, in the case of David here, to number Israel, uh, to be able to know uh, his uh, military prowess, his uh, capabilities and all that kind of thing. Well, when we look at that ordinarily, in the light of wanting to know what and what do you have, when we look at that as plain and normal, but there could be something else from within that could be uh, responsible for that. For instance, pride, you know, of achievement, pride of where you have been opportune to be could come up. And by the time somebody is doing something that in the surface looks ordinary, looks acceptable, looks as if there is nothing wrong in that, what's wrong in taking censors? Just censors, which nations do. But the fact that something was behind it, we are told in that passage that it was David that provoked Israel. So let's know this. I'm emphasizing this because we you may not see a physical Satan, but what is coming and happening from within. If you weigh every thought in the light of scriptures, you'll be able to know. This thing that looks legitimate, is it really um, all right because of the motives behind it? So those things that come to the heart, which your heart eventually condemns you or makes you to feel condemned, is because of the light of the scriptures that has actually come in to say this is wrong and then we must keep away from that. We also need to know that temptation also coming to man, may, like I've said, may also come from a physical person around you. Like our sister had just said, uh, you are trying to preach the gospel and then somebody comes and says, but this is your church self, uh, this and that and that, and begins to criticize and say certain things. Um, you must understand that it could be temptation also. It could be temptation to discourage you. It could be temptation to make you have some kind of negative feelings towards your church. It could be temptation to make you think that some other church is doing something better than we are doing. And all these things are reasons why some people have missed their steps and went astray. But you need to understand that by the time you are preaching the gospel, your focus should be the gospel. When somebody tries to take you this way, you bring him back to the uh, point where you are actually trying to lead him to. It is not the activity, the mode of operation, the what is allowed, what is not allowed, and all that, but uh, the person simply, the devil is, is still a temptation. You may not see that as temptation to commit sin and all that, but if that thing could discourage you and you stop preaching the gospel, if it could make you to start feeling that our church is not doing enough, if it could make you to think, let me look for elsewhere, maybe I'll get something better, and one gets lost, has that not become temptation? So these are all parts of temptation. We need to be wise, and I pray God will give us wisdom to identify these things in Jesus' name. Uh, the next sister then from the choir, please, can you still ask your question? Good morning, sir. My question this morning is from our, from our text. James chapter 1, I want to read verse 13. Let no man say when he is tempted. I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempt he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn unto his own lust and enticed. I have three passages I want to read. Because of time, just ask the, the next question. one is... Excuse me. Please, just ask the question. We don't have much time so that you will not be asking questions and we're not able to answer you. Okay. So just ask the question. The, the second passage is from our test again. Luke chapter 4, verse 1. 
That passage said Jesus was led into the wilderness and he was tempted. And the third passage I want to ask is concerning the Lord's Prayer in the book of Matthew chapter 6 verse 13. The prayer said, Jesus himself said, lead us not into temptation. So my question is this, sir. From our passage, he said, sometimes we are being tempted because of our lust. And then another passage is saying, Please Jesus... Please ask the question because I may not have the time to answer you if you don't ask the question. I'm asking, when are we tempted because of our lust? And when is the Spirit of God leading us? I don't understand the... I don't understand that place. Is it all temptation that is being brought about by our feelings? Or sometimes God allow it for a purpose? That's my question. Thank you. In the passage um, you've read, in James, it's very clear. The Bible tells us, let no man say when he's tempted, I'm tempted of the Lord. It's not the Lord that is actually tempting us. The devil is the source of temptation. Then in Luke chapter 4, where you read in Luke chapter 4 from verse 1, Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Then we are told in verse 2, being 40 days tempted of the devil. Uh, we need to understand that, that Jesus was led of the Spirit. It's not that Jesus led him into temptation. Uh, sorry, that the Spirit led Jesus into temptation. Jesus was led of the Spirit into the wilderness. But while he was there, just like our side scripture teacher in the adult section emphasized, that the fact that you are in the Spirit, the fact that you are so high in the Spirit, whatever level you are, you can't be higher than the Lord Jesus. And so even if you are led by the Spirit, you might still be tempted. Somebody may say, this sister I want to get married, I know my testimony. I was led by the Lord. It is so clear, so real. You still need to watch it during your courtship. If there is anything that goes wrong, you will not put the blame to God. Adam said, the woman whom thou gavest me, was it then God that actually put the temptation to, Ed, to Adam and to Eve? No. The fact that, uh, the, that Jesus was led of the Spirit and that he was tempted of the devil should, uh, should also make us understand as believers, you may be spiritual, you may be high up in the Spirit, you may be, you know, well grounded in the faith, established with all the knowledge of the Word of God, yet you need to be careful because Satan will always tempt whatever that happens. And that's why we are told in uh, First uh, Corinthians, First Corinthians chapter 10, First Corinthians chapter 10, in verse 12, Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth, let him that thinketh he standeth, no matter how spiritual you are, let him that thinketh he standeth, do what? Take heed, lest he fall. The essence of our having this study today is so that we will be watchful. It is not that this temptation, this one, I'm led by the Spirit of God into this temptation. No. It's not that this one, it is my flesh that is causing it. The Bible has made it very, very clear how the temptation comes. But he said, let everyone that standeth take heed, lest he fall. Then in verse 13, there had no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. We need to understand that temptation is common to man, to believers, to unbelievers. The believers have the word of God. They have the grace of God to overcome. The unbelievers succumb into it because they do not have the grace of God. But the Bible says here that God is faithful, who will not suffer or permit you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make way to escape that you may be able to bear it. So we need to know these things that um, the devil always, uh, you know, uses various uh, means and sources to tempt us and that the believer needs to be very, very careful to ensure that uh, when the devil is, um, uh, is bringing those temptations that we'll be able to recognize it and know that this is temptation and then um, we'll overcome. Now, we need to understand that as the devil tempts, even the very purpose of the devil should actually stir the believer up to say, this will not happen to me. If you look at what the Lord Jesus said in, um, 
in Luke chapter 22. Look at that, Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22 in verse 31. Luke chapter 22, verse 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan had desired to have you, that he will do what? That he may sift you as wheat. In fact, brethren, uh, when you look at this very verse of scripture, and you look at that, that is it true that this Satan, whatever means, whether he's tempting you through your friend, through your landlord, in fact, for, the, for Job, it was even the wife, the beloved wife that said, do you still keep this your integrity? Don't you think you should just simply curse God and die? Wherever it may be coming from, when you know that the devil has a program to sift me as wheat, that means make you empty, take away every valuable what God has placed in your life and to leave you shallow, empty, useless, and hopeless. It will not happen to any of us in Jesus' name. That's why when you know that, my brother, when you know that, my sister, when you're in courtship and you know that, he wants that this courtship that God led you into, that it will end up a shame. It will not happen to you. You know, you get into a, a business and the Lord is prospering that business. The devil is after that. This, oh, I think God is blessing you now with money. You will miss heaven. You will not miss heaven in Jesus' name. That's why in that business, in that courtship, in that uh, uh, admission you got into school or whatever, you are just saying, never. The devil will not get me down because his purpose is to steal, to kill, and to destroy, and to make sure that he sift the believer and leave him empty and useless. It will not happen to us. So brethren, with what we have learned today, we need to um, rise up on our feet and then tell the Lord, Lord, victory is possible. They had no temptation taking me, but such as is common to man. I know you are faithful, you know, to keep me from falling. Uh, you know, the Bible says the Lord shall preserve me from all evil. That he shall, you know, he, he shall deliver me from all evil and he shall preserve me unto his everlasting kingdom. I want you at this time to speak to the Lord and tell the Lord, God, you have brought me into the kingdom. And you have promised to keep me. And I know that you have the ability to keep me. And I am not going to wander away from you. By the grace of God, he giveth us the victory. The Bible says, thanks be unto God who giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. You must understand that the enemy has a purpose. He has a purpose. He, he is determined. And he's going out by all means. He recruits various agencies to make sure that we fall. But you are not going to fall. I'm not going to fall. And that's why we make up our minds. And as you're praying this moment, you are really calling upon God. Out of the depth of your heart, think about it. If Simon Peter knew this clearly, that the program of the devil is to empty him and to make him useless, then when Jesus...